In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This past Friday was the Feast of the Sacred Heart. It occurs on the second Friday after the Feast of Corpus Christi. So Corpus Christi is on that third, two Thursdays ago. Traditionally, there was an octave. That is, from Thursday to Thursday, we celebrated the Feast of Corpus Christi. And then the Friday immediately after that octave, which is the second uh, Thursday after, or the f- second Friday after Corpus Christi, we celebrate the Feast of the Sacred Heart. So, why that day? Why do we celebrate the Sacred Heart of Jesus on that day? And then the church permits us uh, in the extraordinary form to celebrate the external solemnity, that is, we can do two Masses today uh, in honor of the Sacred Heart. So why that day? Because our Lord appeared and requested that that day be the Feast of the Sacred Heart. He appeared to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque in 1673 in France. St. Margaret Mary Alacoque was a nun of the Visitation uh, visitation uh, Order. It was an order founded by St. Jane de Chantel, who was associated with St. Francis de Sales. They, she had founded it, she was a generation previous, so she founded in the early 1700s. So this, I'm sorry, early 1600s. This was uh, 1673. Our Lord appeared to St. Margaret Mary, and he requested three things. First of all, he requested that that Friday be the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Now, before this, uh, in the Middle Ages, there was a development of the Feast of the Sacred Heart. Uh, we had St. John Eudes in the early 1600s also promoting uh, devotion to the hearts of Jesus and Mary. But this apparition, there are these sets of, uh, this set of apparitions really, uh, really uh, stimulated the uh, devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So he requested this feast day. Now, this is not the first time he requested uh, certain feasts be inserted into the calendar. If you recall, Corpus Christi, he did that in the Middle Ages. uh, He asked that this feast be added. And if you recall, the Mass of Corpus Christi uh, was written by St. Thomas Aquinas in the 1200s. So this isn't the first time he's done this. He asked for that day to be the Feast of the Sacred Heart. He also requested two more things of St. Margaret Mary. He asked that she do a holy hour on Thursdays. Why Thursdays? He said especially, he asked her specifically uh, from uh, right before midnight there at night, Thursday night. Why? Because this is to unite herself to that time when our Lord was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Right? That was on a Thursday. The Last Supper, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane where he sweat the blood before being arrested. And that, that place is still there. You can go to the Holy Land, right? The rock is still there uh, where our Lord, uh, uh, where the blood dripped down onto it. And he asked his apostles, Can you not watch with me for one hour? Can you not watch with me for one hour? And their response, by their actions, was no. They fell asleep. So our Lord asked St. Margaret Mary to spend that hour with him. And of course, not just for her, but for anyone. To specially spend an hour, it doesn't have to be at night, Thursdays. Watch with him for one hour. Console him for the suffering that he underwent. Remember, at that time, on Holy Thursday, he can see throughout all of time. So even when we do a holy hour now, and we console his suffering heart at that time, he sees it, and he is consoled by it. So he requested that holy hour. And thirdly, he asked her for frequent communion especially on First Fridays. Fridays in general, but First Fridays. So remember at this time, there was not the tradition of communion every day. Even though the Council of Trent asked for frequent communion, uh, frequent communion didn't come in until about 100 years ago. Uh, And even then, 
Uh, oftentimes, uh, communion will only be offered once on Sunday, usually between Masses. I gave a whole homily on this uh, uh, about a year or so ago. Um, and so there was not frequent communion. He asked for frequent communion, especially on first Fridays. Why? To console him. To unite yourself with his heart. Uh, to console that heart. Now, later on, two years later, came the more famous apparition about the Sacred Heart. And this is the one where he held out his heart to St. Margaret Mary. And oftentimes you see stained glass windows of this. There's paintings of this where our Lord is holding his Sacred Heart in his hand. And what does he say? He says, Behold the heart that has so loved men and that it has spared nothing even to exhausting and consuming itself in order to testify its love. In return, I receive from the greater part only ingratitude by their irreverence and sacrilegious and by the coldness and contempt they have for me in this sacrament of love, that is the Eucharist. And then he said more. And this is not as well known. I come into the heart I have given you in order that through your fervor you may atone for the offenses which I have received from lukewarm and slothful hearts that dishonor me in the blessed sacrament. He asked her and he asked her to spread this devotion to make reparation for those who receive communion uh, with disrespect. For those who receive communion lukewarmly, that is not with fervor. And then he goes on. And he makes a great promise. What does he say? He says, I promise you in the unfathomable mercy of my heart that my omnipotent love will procure the grace of final penitence for all those who receive communion on nine successive first Fridays of the month. They will not die in my disfavor or without having received the sacraments, since my divine heart will be their sure refuge in the last moments of their life. This promise is one of the greatest promises our Lord has ever made. He doesn't promise the grace to uh, go to heaven. He does not make that promise. He promises that the person will go to heaven. There's a difference. Sometimes, like the first Saturday promise, Our Lady says she will be there with the graces so that the person who has done the first Saturdays would have the graces to uh, be able to go to heaven, right? But the fact that she's there with the graces means the person can still say no. Here, our Lord doesn't promise to just give the graces. He promises that that person will go to heaven. But not only that, he promises that they're not going to die without the sacraments. That is especially extreme unction. Let's read that again. I promise you, in the unfathomable mercy of my heart, that my omnipotent love will procure the grace of final penitence. That is, that person, at the end of their life, the final penitence, they will be sorry. For all those who receive communion on nine successive first Fridays of the month, they will not die in my disfavor. That is, they're not going to go to hell. Or without having received the sacraments. He's promising extreme unction and communion. Since my divine heart will be their sure refuge at the last moments of their life. This is one of the greatest promises our Lord has ever made to us. And yet, unfortunately, it's not well known. And we need to take our Lord and really uh, strive to be faithful. Faithful to His requests here. Oftentimes people will only do the nine first Fridays and that's it. They forget the fact that our Lord made the first Friday promise. Why? So that we would then uh, make atonement 
to his heart. For those people who receive the Blessed Sacrament unworthily or lukewarmly. And he doesn't just want it for those nine first Fridays. He wants us to do it regularly. He wants us to be united to him. To unite our hearts with him. It's a little bit of an irony. Nowadays we have frequent communion. The reason why communion wasn't frequent in the past was because there was a concern that people would receive it in a lukewarm state. That slowly over the centuries, communion was less and less given to the faithful. So the idea that uh, the fervor would increase uh, when the person did receive it. Now, it went too far. Of course, nowadays we're probably too far the other direction. Many people just receive communion uh, and they don't really think much of it. They just come to Mass, receive communion. People don't go to Mass because they say, well, you know, I can't receive communion anyway, so I, what's the sense of going to Mass? We lose the understanding of communion and the understanding of the Mass. Even if a person can't receive communion, can still make a, uh, a spiritual communion. And people who make spiritual communions can uh, do it in a great degree of fervor and probably receive more graces than the people who are receiving communion lukewarmly. Just come up and receive and go back and, and go on. We need to increase our love for our Lord. If you notice, when he talks to St. Margaret Mary, he's equating the Eucharist with his heart. That first one. He says, um, Behold the heart that is so loved men, even to exhausting and consuming itself, in order to testify to its love. In return, I, re I receive from the greater part only in gratitude, by their irreverence and sacrilege, and by the coldness and contempt they have for me in this sacrament of love. That is the Eucharist. He's equating the two. The Eucharist and his heart. The heart of love. You know, many times for Eucharistic miracles, they'll do a little test on the, the flesh that has been changed. And in every case, it is heart tissue. The heart as a muscle is fundamentally different. The tissue is fundamentally different than the other regular muscles. So it doesn't have to be a, an exhaustive analysis. A simple look under a microscope. And they know immediately that's heart muscle. And in every case that I know of, whenever a Eucharistic miracle is observed or analyzed, it is always, always heart tissue. It is the sacrament of love. Our Lord gives it to us. Why? So that we would be united to Him. And oftentimes, we receive lukewarmly. And that can be received, not just lukewarmly, but with indifference and also, it can be a disgrace. Bad communions, sacrilegious communions. And our Lord has asked us to make reparation to, for them. This is the reason why He chose the Friday after the octave of Corpus Christi. We have the great feast of Corpus Christi, the body of Christ, in which we uh, celebrate this great gift. But then the day after, he's asking us then to make reparation for those who approach it with indifference or scorn. So, in order to do this, now there's the nine first Fridays. Our Lord gives us this promise. Why? So that we would start to have a great devotion to his heart and the sacrament of his love. He gives us his promise. Oftentimes people do it and then uh, they, they do the nine first Fridays and then they no longer have devotion. They just do it because they, uh, they, get the, uh, they get the great grace. And it is a great grace. But when we do that devotion, we should continue on. Not just do the nine first Fridays, but continue on on Friday. And make that reparation for uh, to his heart. Now, just to be clear, to gain the grace, we have to receive communion on nine consecutive First Fridays. Sometimes I get someone who comes to me and says, Father, you know, I was doing the First Fridays and I missed this Friday. You know, we had a big 
family get together and I had to travel and I wasn't able to receive uh, communion. Uh, can I continue on next month or do I have to restart over? And I, and I have to say, you know, I didn't make the promise. The promise is five consecutive first Friday, or nine consecutive first, first uh, Fridays. Sorry, I'm only the messenger. I don't make the rules. Uh, so it's important to do it on nine consecutive first Fridays. And there will be difficulties. You know, the devil will tempt us, you know, in his regular way of tempting us. He knows this promise also. He sees the souls that escape him. So he's going to, uh, you know, try to arrange things to make it a little more difficult. So it's important for us to do what our Lord requested, the nine First Fridays. And then also we should have the intention of honoring the Sacred Heart of Jesus, receiving final perseverance, that we need to have the intention of of just doing this uh, for the Sacred Heart and this promise. And that we have to offer it in atonement for these sins against the, the Blessed Sacrament. We should have that intention. So, you don't have to make that intention explicitly when you receive the Blessed Sacrament. You can make that intention now. And even if you forget, at the time of that first Friday, it will still count, unless you explicitly withdrew that intention. So if you just make that intention now, Jesus on the first Fridays, when I receive communion, I intend to offer it. Uh, an atonement for the offenses against your heart, against the Blessed Sacrament, against lukewarm and sacrilegious communions. Even if you forget about it, it will still count. So I ask you to make that intention now. It's called a virtual intention. And then also we should do a confession on the first Friday or a week before or after. And I guess I shouldn't have to say that our communion has to be a good communion. You have to be in a state of grace, right? So uh, you should make that make that confession. Now, it is important for us then to really be faithful to the request of our Lord. When we think back to Holy Thursday, that suffering He underwent in the garden, that this devotion unites ourselves to that. He asked His apostles, to watch and pray with him, to to console him. He asked St. Margaret Mary to console him. This devotion, he sees us when we offer this for the outrages against the Blessed Sacrament. It is also tying us back to Holy Thursday. If you can, also make a holy hour on Thursday to watch and pray with him as he says doesn't have to be at night, but even during the day, in the morning. And if you can't do that, do it at least on Friday. Our Lord, I'm sure, will accept it. He says, watch and pray. Can you not spend one hour with me? His heart of love is suffering, suffered for us. Let me read that uh, that second part of that first message, of the, se- of the, of the message there. I come into the heart that I have given you. He gave us our hearts. In order that through your fervor, you may atone for the offenses which I have received from lukewarm and slothful hearts that dishonor me in the blessed sacrament. Our Lord came from heaven to ask us to make atonement for this. To unite so that he could unite himself to us. He could go into the heart that he created. Let us not ignore his words. If you have not done the first Friday devotions, do them. Do them. Make every effort to do them. The nine first Fridays. And then even after that, don't forget about it. Respond to the request of our Lord. Make reparation for those lukewarm and bad communions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.